Hey guys, it's Bella from Bella's Custom Crochets, and I just got a fresh haircut, which only happens a couple times a year for me, so I figured I should record a video while I'm looking good. <laughs> I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I thought I would take you on a little bit of a tour of my art studio, my office, my yarn room. I don't know, the room in which I have my stuff. Uh, it was previously, it's been, it's, served a lot of purposes this room. When we first moved in, we used it as our master bedroom while we gutted our upstairs. And then it was a guest room. I had a queen size bed in here, but we've decided that um, seeing as we're adults and we don't host a lot of slumber parties <laughs> and um, all of our family is local. So I don't know who would be coming to sleep in this queen size bed that we had. Um, the only time we were using it is if someone was sick, we'd quarantine one of us downstairs. Um, but we also have a pull-out couch, so we didn't need any more extra beds in our life. So we decided it would be better used as a office um, type space for me. Full disclosure, I don't do a lot of my actual making in this room. Um, I do most of my crocheting and uh, all of my laptopy type work, um, either on the couch at night, watching TV with my husband and whatnot, um, or I'll sit on my bed while my daughter's napping and work there. So I don't actually make a lot in this room, um, but I do have a desk space uh, that I take photos on and film tutorials and occasionally I'll sit down with a laptop there, but I, I never sit in this chair and like make stuff. This is just a podcasting chair. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take you on a little tour of this little spare room space that we've converted into what I like to call my art studio. It's nothing fancy um, and it's still kind of a work in progress. We just moved the queen size bed out like right before Christmas. So this whole new layout is new. That's why we call it a new layout. Uh, but I really like watching videos of other people's space and getting a feel of how people organize and display and just lay out um, their artsy stuff. So I will take you on a little tour. I'm not one uh, who has a big yarn stash. I do have a bunch of yarn that um, is business related and I have a bunch of yarn that is um, scraps from other projects, but I don't have a big stash of yarn that I don't have a project for. I very much buy with a purpose and a project in mind for the immediate future. So I'm not going to show you a ton of fancy yarn, but I'm going to show you where I put the yarn that I do have and my other various supplies. So come with me on this journey of my art studio. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start in this corner. Um, Sorry the lighting's a little funky, but it's just that time of day and you'll be fine. <laughs> this is the spot you're most used to seeing, I'd say. Uh, this is obviously where I record most of my videos where I'm sitting down. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way around the room and we'll talk through what stuff is, where it came from, and I'll try and link down below anything that you might be able to get your hands on, but you're gonna see a very common theme that a lot of stuff in this room and in my life is uh, secondhand or something like that. Um, so first off, this chair is, it's bright orange and I love it. It's like velvety, not that moving closer, you're gonna be able to see velvet, but velvety, it swivels, it rocks, and I got it on the side of the road and it's awesome. <laughs> uh, some thrifted pillows, this ottoman where I put stuff on, I guess it's an ottoman, it's like a little side table, but it's squishy. Um, where I put stuff on where I'm podcasting, uh, somebody bought it for me, it's from TJ Maxx. And then here is your standard, you can see it's a six, six cube shelf standard um, cubby shelf type situation. I, I can't remember exactly where I purchased it. I think this is one of the only things in the room that I actually purchased. Um, well, I purchased all the yarn obviously, but furniture wise. I got it last year and I want to say it was Kohl's. It may have been Target, but it's a, I don't want to move the whole chair. It's six cubbies. It's white, you know, standard. Uh, a lot of people love the Ikea um, Calyx, Calyx, whatever it is, shelf. It's not that one. It's just another cubby shelf. At some point, I'll probably get some baskets or um, bins to go in it, but I bought it initially. It was all packed full. I did a really big um, order of Lion Brand Color Made Easy, or a little really big Lion Brand order, but it was mainly Color Made Easy uh, last January. A couple hundred skeins of Lion Brand that I um, bought wholesale. If anybody wants information on purchasing wholesale through Lion Brand, you can message me kind of a process um but yeah I used that for most of my line last year so all of those cubbies were packed full 
they're less full now I'll probably do another order in the summer um, but for now I have another cubby that's just got some books I don't keep many books um, just because I think you can find so much on the internet and Pinterest and whatnot storing books can get a little tedious as far as patterns and whatnot but I do like some of the like stitches and um, designing type books and then that's just a vintage egg basket I'm sorry the pointing is so weird I'm not gonna point you're just gonna look um, the yellow vintage egg basket is full of some yarn scraps cute little felted um, coaster type thing and then up top here it's kind of kind of chaos also we're gonna back up I did not paint these walls blue I did not put up that wallpaper you can thank the previous homeowner we just haven't redone the room yet um, so she really liked blue and wood paneling so thankfully this room isn't a wood paneling room most of the rest of the house is but the blue is it's tolerable but that wallpaper Woof! Okay. So, starting over here, we have the needle and hook type corner. DPN, oh, oh, pointing. DPNs, I hate them all, but sometimes you need them. Some stitch holders. And I want to show you this one back here. This container that has my knitting needles in it is actually um, a vintage ice cream container from the restaurant that I used to work at. Uh, it was like a ice cream parlor diner. It's very well known in our area. Um, this is from, I think like the fifties, maybe they were clearing out stuff and getting rid of some stuff that they found in like the storage. And I was like, oh my goodness, I want that. So that's cool. So that has all of my circular knitting needles kind of shoved in there. I don't have a large selection. Um, cause as we know, I'm mainly a crocheter and I kind of buy knitting needles for projects as I need them. At some point I would really like to get a set of interchangeable circulars. I do really like Chiaogu. Um, I like their cord, the red lace cord, but I don't, I feel like the tips are maybe a little too dull for me. I've tried Knitter's Pride. I've tried, you know, the standard Susan Bates, that sort of thing. I don't like wood or bamboo, even though I do have some. Also a cat totally chewed the end off of that one. <laughs> but yeah, I've yet to find a set that really works for me before I splurge on an interchangeable, because um, that's an investment. So I've kind of just been buying. I know it's not the best method because you're spending money on them individually that way but I'm trying to find ones that really resonate well with me then I'll buy a whole set and then I just I don't use straights a lot but these are like stuff that um from thrift stores or family members have given them to me I acquire a lot of things uh it sounds kind of gory but as people's family members pass away and they're going through estates I acquire a lot of yarn and fiber arts related things that way because people are like oh Bella could use that so I go through and I get rid of what I don't want, but um, occasionally you need straight needles for something and they just kind of look cute there. This is a llama that I got at, or an alpaca maybe? I don't know, he's a finger puppet. He's kind of cute. Got him at the um, New England Fiber Festival. Uh, these are an assortment of crochet hooks. Again, that's a pen. <laughs> an assortment of crochet hooks that, some of which I use, some of which I have obtained from like I said, people clearing out stuff like this one. Rarely do I ever use it, but if you need a ridiculously large crochet hook, it's in there. And then just some packaging stuff. Some tea sitting in a pile. This is a Ikea something or another. I got it. Somebody gave it to me, so I don't know what the name of it is, but it's from Ikea. And it just stores some thread, some um, twine packing string whatever you want to call it my pom-pom makers are in there this is a christmas ornament but i like it up year round from b meyer studios she's a connecticut local but she does all the states you can find her on etsy i'll link her below if you want to get that i am now wedging myself behind the chair and it's very awkward <laughs> but if you want to get your state you can find it there and she does custom colors and you can pick where the heart goes and all sorts of cute stuff i don't know what's in this store oh those are tags that's some, I used to make my own leather tags. Now I have somebody that makes them for me, so I don't really use that. And then this is just some more small business packing stuff, my stamp. And then if I back myself out from behind this chair that I've wedged myself into, woof, okay. Um, you're gonna see that in this room, there are a lot of random coffee mugs because another thing people seem to buy me is coffee mugs with foxes on them, which I appreciate, but you can only own so many. So um, they get sent to the craft room. This one is the crochet hooks that I use the most. These are mainly the ergonomic hooks, but these are mainly the um, Clover Amore set. 
So these, you're familiar with these guys. If you're not, you need to be, they're the best. Um, as much as I have tried to love, it's really hard to film myself touching things. Um, as much as I've tried to love like the furls hooks, they're too big in my hand and it's like a counterweight and it really, really slows me down. I'm not left-handed, I'm just showing you with my left hand because I'm holding the camera in my right hand. Um, but yeah, I don't like them. I want to, they're beautiful and they make pretty photo props, but in all truth, I do not use them in projects really. Um, I've tried, I just don't love them. They're too heavy for me. And I want to be someone that like supports like, I know like knit brooks and hand carved, hand carved hooks, is that her Instagram name? And um, is it Bee Queen? Somebody Queen makes really beautiful wood ones like carved handmade wood hooks. I can't do it. I just don't love them. They slow me down. And as you know, I made like almost 340 crocheted items last year. So these ergonomic ones with the squishy um, clover or more set, they're key. I love them. You can find them on Amazon or elsewhere, but they are perfect. That was awkward. Random mug of pens, random mug of scissors. No big deal up there. Some lip balm. Then I have some gauge things, needle gauges, hook gauges, and I have an aloe plant that I'm trying to keep alive. I kill house plants and I have to hide them because my cat eats them and throws up everywhere. So then I hide them and then I forget to water them and then they die. So that's a cool story. That's from Hobby Lobby. I saw it on um, Drunk Knitter's channel and I loved it. So we got that. And then up here <laughs> with my beautiful wallpaper, uh, are some hanging baskets my mom got me probably from the thrift store um, of yarn this one's kind of assorted hand dyed hand spun that's just lion brand I don't know some stuff that I don't want my baby touching this is my I'm gonna stand on the ottoman and show you this is my like prize possession yarn um, with the exception of this red one which is some Malabrigo um, this is life in the long grass and this is Ching and my parents brought those back uh, to me from London and they are super special to me and I have projects in mind for them and I'm just so terrified I want to design a sweater out of this and I'm so terrified to commit to it because it's such special yarn and they brought it back from London and it cost me I paid for it but they brought it back for me and it cost me quite a bit and I'm worried I'm gonna mess it up so it's living up here in this dangling banana basket or whatever this is um out of the hands of the toddler so no one can touch it and here is just some random Aaron weight scraps Block 21 prints. I sing her praises all the time. Cute, adorable penguin ornament. I love it year round. Some yarn bowls. That's a colander. Works good as a yarn bowl. Stitch markers. Some of them. My leather tags, which are made for me locally by um, Pat Carroll Designs. Love those. He's great. That's a fox cookie jar. It has some fingering weight scraps in it. That one's got DK weight. That little buddy there is a amigurumi cactus that I use as a bean cushion. And then I don't think there's actually anything in these. I'm just using them for height. This is a vintage um, painter, artist box. I don't know. I got it at an antique store in Washington and I love it. And this is something from my childhood. Now this dresser is another side of the road treasure. Um, I got different knobs for it. I think I got them on Amazon, but you can get them. Anthropology, Hobby Lobby, you know, all the places to get the cute knobs. Um, so we'll go through the drawers here. This one is just the all assorted things drawer. Just random craft supplies, business cards, a lint roller for when the fluffs get everywhere, some ribbon, an embossing gun, some more tags, some random shenanigans, felt. Um, I used to do a ton of amigurumi. Um, so for eyeballs and stuff, I used felt. And then I have some buttons. These yellow ones are all buttons sorted out. Ooh. Just a bunch of buttons. Um, one of these has pins. Oh, that's more buttons. This one has pins for sewing and blocking. Ooh, I just threw those on the floor. Pick those up because those are precious. And then some other random craft supply type stuff. Just all lives in this drawer. Shutting it one-handed. And then all the rest of the drawers are just assorted yarn scraps. Like I said, I used to do a ton of both amigurumi and I started out doing like animal character hats. 
um, for kids. So I used a ton of this type of stuff to do like cats, puppies, monsters, etc. Um, but now I do not use a ton of worsted acrylic. Um, I'll use it if I'm doing, I don't know, like an Afghan type project, but acrylic really is not my jam so much anymore. Uh, so it doesn't get used a lot, but I do have it all organized nicely by color because Roy G. Biv for life, guys. It's how the universe is supposed to be. If it's good enough for the Lord, it's good enough for me. That's what I say. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever said that, but yes. Um, so that's the red, yellow, pink drawer. Same idea. This one's packed full of greens, blues, and purples. They're mostly all balled up. Some of them are still in skeins, but they'll get used eventually. Move my ottoman. This one is just black grays, beiges, etc. I have a little bit of yarn undyed from my dyeing experiments. And then this bottom drawer is just all the things that don't have a home. So the weird chenille yarns. This is something I don't know what I'm doing with. Some fur yarn, some sport weight cotton yarn. This one is packed full as well, but assorted funky yarn lives down there and it doesn't want to shut with one hand. Um, I probably should get rid of some of this and I have gone through and given away like colors and stuff that I'm not using to either donate or um, some of my younger siblings crochet, but I don't know. I am a sucker for hanging on to scrappy things because it could be something. And it's really good too for swatching and tutorials and that sort of thing, experimenting. So I hang on to those. This is an ugly corner of bags and whatnots. Um, those are my blocking mats. And by blocking mats, I mean they're exercise mats that I bought at Aldi that I used for blocking mats. They were super cheap. I think they were like $12 or something. Um, but there's four or six or something of them. I don't know. It's a very large area, so I can block out a really huge shawl and stuff on it. I'll pick up those buttons after. Don't worry. And then all of my project bags which are mostly just tote bags, are living back here. If you're wondering what that hideousness is, previous homeowner thought it would be a good idea to access the plumbing for the bathroom, which is the next room over, by cutting off a chunk of the wall and taping it back on. Because that's legitimate. So we just hide that with bags. Uh, <laughs> here are my sock blockers. I actually haven't used them yet, um, but I will tag down below who they're from. Shop on Etsy in Poland. Really beautiful. Laser cut. This is my custom made backpack from Coal Mama Creations, another Connecticut local. She sews these rope bags, makes these wood um, fasteners, buttons, I don't know what you call them. But it's a custom backpack. I love it. And then in the corner here I have my tripod, which I use for filming obviously. Random poster on the wall because I like poppies. And then this is kind of just a stack I have to keep navigating around things. Let me move the ottoman back, hang on. Random stack of things. Um, it's kind of looking messy right now, but this is a basket of stuff to use to talk on my next podcast episode. I like to congregate it all together so when I'm ready to film, um, I have all of the designs and yarns and stuff. I can never say that word. All the stuff that I need to talk about in my podcast lives in that basket. Underneath there is a um, it's got my scale for postage and my cash box for events. That is going to become a tutorial. A tray back there that I use for photos. This is a vintage like um, cosmetic case that has all of my microphones and stuff for video. This I was going to show you, but I'm not going to try to pull this all down one-handed. Nope, not going to open. <laughs> this is a, a knit blanket. It's a bunch of knit squares that I made. Oh my goodness, like eight years ago, maybe seven years ago, um, with the intention of one day having a child and them having this wonderful stripy knit blanket on their bed. I currently have a child and I just don't want to commit to connecting all of those knit squares. So they're living in there. That is just a random keepsake box of stuff from my husband and I. And then this box has my maiden name painted on it. It was my toy box as a kid and it's got some random stuff in it. Random scrappy rug, no idea where it's from. Okay, moving on <laughs> to, are you noticing a lot of no idea what any of this stuff is type theme? This is my desk, or it's really actually just a, a kitchen table. We acquired it um, when some friends moved and we had the other three chairs down in the basement. It used to be on our um, like porch room, um, but that's become a playroom now. So I stole the table as a desk. 
And on it I have Knit Picks Ball Winder. I believe it's also the Knit Picks. I think so. I had to, I bought a couple of them and they didn't work for me, but I believe this is the Knit Picks. Um, what are you called? Swift as well. And then I have a little cake stand that has some of my hand dyed yarn that I'm planning on doing some over dyeing with, some scraps, a lot of um, sock yarn and single ply stuff that I have some stuff in mind for. You can see it snowed a little bit here over the weekend and we were dragging my daughter around in a sled. We were dragging my daughter around is a great sentence. We were pulling my daughter in a sled <laughs> around the front yard and she thought that was fabulous. Um, that is a design that needs to be frogged and re-swatched because it came out different size than I thought. So that's coming in the spring. We're going to work on that. This is a note because every single time I go to um, calculate yardage, excuse my gross window sills, again, haven't redone this room, I forget how to cross multiply, so I made myself a note. And then here we have, um, this is my podcast notebook. I just keep you know, podcast notes in it, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. Generally don't, but just kind of. Wall calendar. Just got this on Amazon. I love having a color-coordinated wall calendar. This is my planner from last year, another Block 21 print sticker. I like the idea of a planner, but I always, like, commit to it the first couple months of the year and then never open it again. Um, so I need to decide if I'm going to get a refill for that this year or not, but it's cute. That's some driftwood from some vacation somewhere. And then I have the pens for my calendar and again just more random mugs on a cute little um, swatch I guess. It was a washcloth but it came out really dense so it's a it's a coaster swatch now. And then my laptop again more block 21 prints. Uh, I don't do a ton of work on my laptop in here. Uh, I usually bring it elsewhere. Sit on the couch and watch TV with my husband at night. Hi, you can see me. Um, but yeah, it lives in here. And then I need to make a cover for this chair cushion because it falls off all of the time. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> so I need to crochet a cute chair cushion. That's just some um, de-stash yarn that I'm getting rid of. And then the, I don't remember what this is called. If I can find the link to Amazon, I will link it below. But this is just the arm that I use for um, videoing tutorials. I usually set up my tripod with my camera like right here, put down one of my um, white swatches and do the filming there for tutorials. And then this section of the room is my husband's domain mostly. Technically that's my keyboard, but um, this is the music corner. My husband's a bassist, um, but he also has many, many a stringed instrument in his life. Some ukuleles down there, some guitars. Um, Yes, his office is the next room over, but we have a couch in there so I can kind of hang out with him. So as a compromise for having the hangout couch in his office, we have to have the music stuff in my office area, which is fine. It's contained to a corner. So that's, you know, an ugly corner. That's music stuff. Don't worry about that. This is a basket of all of the white swatches that I use for... Um, photo taking, tutorials, etc. They're just, I pick out like cool stitches on Pinterest and make large white swaths of fabric. Random pin collection on a thing for T. Fratonsky, which is my last name. Oh, look, more Block 21 prints, guys, because I love her. Again, Sarah's like my favorite maker. This is a great shirt. So this is a mannequin that my mom grabbed me when a local store was closing down. Um, they were selling all their display stuff. So I'm going to use that for markets next year. I call her Bolin because she got no head. And yeah, this is my dandelion dance shawl. I have uh, two duplicate ones. Uh, so that sample is living there and just looking pretty. And then we have a wall of yarn slash art that is in progress. I need to make it prettier. Um, the baskets are all made by my husband's grandmother. Um, she did basket weaving. I don't know if she still does, but she used to. And she's given me a lot of them. And... I love them as a yarn display. That's kind of all yarn that I, like the yellow one is for a design that I just need to sit down and do for the summer. And then some of the other ones are, I need to have them out and think about what I'm making. Like these ones and then this one. My parents brought me back from Greece, so they're really special. So I want to give them a special project, but I don't know what yet. Poppies I drew. This is by my favorite artist who happens to be a toddler. Look at those cute little fingers. Love it. 
This my husband made. Block 21 prints again. This is by Heartstone Gallery, another Connecticut maker. And then that's a hamper because our bathroom's out there. So, you know, that's my dirty laundry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's a filing cabinet where I keep, you know, files. This is where I put my, oh look, more Block 21 prints. She's everywhere. Um, put my yarn labels because I keep track of them, you know, for my year in yarn photo at the end. So I put my monthly labels in there. These are just color made easy scraps that I either work into um, other projects or, you know, use for tutorials, whatnot. Hefty amounts still left, so still good. This is a file sorter, nothing you need to see in there. Nothing of consequence in that drawer. This, if I back it up, is a dry sink that we got at, I used to work at an auction house as well, and it was there for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I was kind of like, can I have that for $10? Because no one was buying it, and I love it. And it's got this chippy blue paint. It's probably lead, it's probably terrible, I don't know. But I love it. This is my favorite color combo. Super chippy inside. And then this just has the rest of my assorted crafty stuff in it. So that's... Mm, that's some t-shirts that are going to be made into t-shirt yarn. This is the letter board letters, my DSLR, some shipping envelopes and baggies, beads, random book, don't know what that is. I think it just wasn't pretty enough on the shelf. This is all my stitch marker making stuff. There'll be a tutorial for that soon if it's not out already. And then the bottom shelf is just some other craft supplies that don't have a home. Um, that's some banking. Those are some sketchbooks pencils, paints, etc. At some point, we'll probably have to get a cabinet um, as my daughter gets older and we accumulate all of the crafty things because we're crafty ladies. But for now, it all lives in here in my adorable chippy dry sink. And again, I got the knobs. <laughs> they're they're like not drilled evenly the way it was. It's the way it was. I just put the knobs on, but they're totally crooked. Um, I think those were Hobby Lobby knobs, but I never want to refinish that. I just love it. And then we have a fun scrappy rug which is circle rug from World Market. So that is 360 on, that up there is a invite from our wedding up top there. Ooh, where's my finger? There it is, invite, shop small, fox drawing. Yeah, that's my little yarn music room. Not super exciting, but I always like seeing other people's spaces and yeah, I just wanted to share mine with you. So like I was saying, I really can't tell you where I got most of the stuff, but if you have any questions, I can try and point you in a direction. And I will tag all the makers and whatnot that I talked about down below. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this little tour. Thank you for adventuring through my creative space with me. Bye guys.